The Grumman F-14 is an American variable sweep wing multi-role fighter developed in the late 1960s and early 1970s as part of the U.S. Navy's VFX program that sought to develop the next generation of naval fighter aircraft. The F-14, colloquially referred to as the Tomcat, was created out of a need for a fleet air defense fighter that could defend a carrier task force against both enemy bombers and long-range missiles. While the U.S. Navy had initially worked with General Dynamics for a naval adaptation of their F-111 platform, it was eventually determined to be too heavy and large for the performance required by the Navy after several were created and tested over a period of several years during the mid to late 1960s. During this time, Grumman studied the design of the F-111 Aardvark and, along with their own engineering knowledge and the advantages of creating a new design from the ground up, rather than adapting a land-based aircraft for naval use, they submitted for and were awarded a contract by the U.S. Navy to develop an alternative design. During this design phase, it was determined that, while the F-111B, the variant of the Aardvark being tested for naval service, was insufficient for sea use, it has several positive features that could be carried over to the initial F-14, including its engines, radar, and missiles, along with its variable sweep wings. The design chosen by Grumman for entry into consideration by the Navy was initially designated as the Model 303. That, over a time, evolved into the F-14 Tomcat that has become since world famous. Operational History Though the F-14 was designed to be a lighter and smaller aircraft than the F-111B, it was still the largest fighter in the naval fleet by a noticeable margin in terms of both weight and size. This is largely as a consequence of its role as a fleet air defense fighter, which required it to carry a large AWG-9 radar, along with AIM-54 Phoenix missiles and a substantial 16,000-pound internal fuel load. With its first flight on December 21st, 1970, an introduction into service nearly four years later, on September 22, 1974, the F-14 was able to serve in the waning days of the Vietnam War, providing air cover during Operation Frequent Wind in 1975, marking the Tomcat's operational debut. It did not see direct conflict again until 1981, when two F-14s took part in the Gulf of Sidra incident, in which two F-14As engaged two Libyan Su-22s. In this incident, the Su-22s fired heat-seeking missiles at the F-14s, of which both were evaded, only to have the F-14s return fire and shoot down both Su-22s without themselves losing a plane. Nearly eight years later, again in the Gulf of Sidra, two F-14s came into contact with two Libyan MiG-23s, of which the F-14 pilots felt that they were being threatened, so the F-14 successfully shot down both MiG-23s without losing an F-14. Famous gun camera video and audio exists of this incident, detailing the words and actions of the F-14 pilots as they happened. Beyond this, the F-14 was used in Operation Desert Storm, where it saw combat as both a strike escort fighter and in the recon role. It saw its only combat loss during this conflict, being lost to an Iraqi surface-to-air missile. It also saw its last air-to-air -air kill in U.S. service during Operation Desert Storm, shooting down an Iraqi helicopter. Beyond this, the F-14 served in the skies over Kosovo, Afghanistan, and Iraq, with Iraq being its place of final combat, ending its career in U.S. service in late 2006. The F-14 also served in the Top Gun School as an aircraft in which elite pilots would hone their skills for use against enemy fighters, with planes like F-5s and F-16s often being used to simulate dogfights in the aggressor roles, imitating planes like the Russian MiG-29 and Su-27s. In this role, and due to its popularity for both its looks and capabilities, the Tomcat took center stage as the plane of choice in the extremely popular 80s movie, Top Gun, in which Tom Cruise plays the role of Maverick, an F-14 pilot known for being a renegade. Aside from its popularity in Hollywood, the F-14 famously only saw service in one other country, Iran, as 80 were ordered by Shah Reza Pahlavi, the then leader of Iran, with 79 being delivered, with the 80th instead being given to the U.S. Navy. This is due to the Iranian Revolution of 1980, as all arms deals between the U.S. and Iran ended immediately once the revolution took place. F-14s in Iranian service saw much more combat, especially in the air-to-air -air role, as the Iran-Iraq War of the 1980s saw intense usage of the F-14. During the first six months of this conflict, the F-14 shot down upwards of 50 Iraqi planes, 
Marines, including MiG 23s, MiG 21s, and Sukhoi 22s, to the loss of a single F 14, though this was due to debris from a destroyed plane hitting it. Though reports differ depending on the source, it is possible that upwards of 160 aircraft were shot down by F 14s, with a loss of about 9 to 16 Tomcats, again, depending on the source. Through the years, Iran has lost numerous F-14s to accidents, defections, and neglect, with current estimates placing their operational capacity at between 15 and 30 being operational, with their ability to be maintained dwindling, as the U.S. will not allow Iran to purchase parts for the F-14. Variants the initial F-14 model produced, the F-14A, featured the same Pratt & Whitney TF-30 turbofan engines that were already in use in the F-111 Ardvar, though subsequent models, namely the F-14B, of which was initially designated as the F-14A+, and the F-14D, received the much more powerful and more reliable General Electric F-110 GE400 engines. This largely solved a notable issue of the F-14A in that, though it featured the still powerful TF-30 engines, it did not carry a 1 to 1 thrust to weight ratio that was requested by the Navy in the original desired specifications for the VFX program. Though it did not bring it up to a 1 to 1 thrust to weight ratio when fully loaded, it did allow for the F-14 to maintain that ratio when carrying lower amounts of fuel with the upgraded F-110 engines. The F-14B and F-14D both benefited from these enhanced GE engines, and both variants were developed around the same time in the 1980s, with the F-14B being a much more modest upgrade from the A, again receiving the enhanced engines and also receiving an upgraded ALR-67 radar warning receiver. 38 F-14s were built totally new as F-14Bs, with 48 F-14As being converted into the B variant. The most well-known variant, the F-14 D, often referred to as the Super Tomcat, saw a much improved avionics suite, along with the aforementioned upgraded engines. These upgrades included an advanced ANAPG-71 radar, an infrared search and track system, new ejection seats, and an airborne self-protection jammer, to name a few. Proposed variants that never took to the skies due to budget restrictions include this Quick Strike, which would have been a ground attack oriented upgrade for the F 14, the Super Tomcat 21, of which would have featured new thrust vectoring engines and an upgraded radar, and the ASF 14, or the Advanced Strike Fighter 14, with the ASF 14 requiring a new Tomcat to be built from the ground up due to how extensive the upgrades would have been. For weaponry, the Tomcat was initially to be armed with missiles, namely the AIM 54 Phoenix. Phoenix long-range missiles for which the aircraft was built around, as well as medium and short-range AIM-7 Sparrows and AIM-9 Sidewinders respectively. The F-14 began being tested with bomb loadouts in the 1980s, with the ability to carry dumb bombs and guided bombs being added in the 1990s, alongside upgrades to avionics for both the A and B variants. While in a ground-attacking role, it was referred to as the Bombcat by pilots and crew. Legacy while the F-14 continues to see service with the Iranian Air Force, albeit in dwindling numbers, it is no longer in service with its primary user, the U.S. Navy, in which it saw a 32-year lifespan, serving from 1974 to 2006, with a total of 712 being built. Of these, however, over 160 were destroyed in accidents with many being destroyed on takeoff and landing during carrier operations, especially with the less reliable TF-30 engines in the F-14A variant. The F-14 became a plane of myth, largely from its universally celebrated good looks, its swing-wing design, and its place in both Hollywood and military lore. Though it is no longer in service and has not been in service for well over a decade in the U.S., it remains at the forefront of what most people think of when they imagine naval aviation. The F-14 blazed a trail forward that, in some people's minds, has not yet been overtaken, and though it was an expensive plane, it had an excellent combat record that was proven over the decades, regardless of the role. Today, several dozen F-14s survive in museums or storage, with the vast majority being destroyed in order to prevent Iran from obtaining their parts in order to maintain their own fleets of Tomcats. While the majority of these planes no longer fly, they live on in the movies and posters that feature them, along with the hopes of many young pilots inspired to fly after being mesmerized by the legendary Tomcat.